Hi, welcome to White Threads Floss Tube number 56. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I thought that I would show you a piece of Mount Malik embroidery that I did some years ago, which I have available as a kit if you're interested in making it too. So what it is, is this Honeysuckle and Rose Doily. Now I'll try and get that in shot nicely for you. I'm not very good at this. You'd think I might have improved by now. So it's got a scalloped edge around it, which is quite typical of Harvinger embroidery. It's got the knitted fringe. It's always knitted, the fringe, um, and the loops are never cut. And it's knitted separately and then sewn to the edge of the embroidery. The embroidery is edged with buttonhole stitch. In this case, let me come in close for you, it's a stepped buttonhole stitch. So there are two long ones and two short ones and two long ones and two short ones. And you can see how they work together. And at the edge of the knitted fringe, there are loops and you sew through those loops and through the edge of the buttonhole stitch. And that's what sews it to the edge there. So buttonhole stitch is a, a stitch that's used a lot in um, Mount Malik embroidery. And then inside that we have a row of French knots. Now those French knots have about three wraps each. And that's what I find is a good size knot um, for Mount Malik embroidery. You, it's, it's chunky embroidery. It's not going to be dainty and neat. Well, it can be neat, but it's not going to be dainty. So you want big and you want chunky. And that's the point of Mount Malik embroidery. It's not meant to be featherweight. Um, so we can see we have a branch of honeysuckle here and a dog rose here. And the honeysuckle is worked in a long armed feather stitch. Let me come in close so you can see that again. Hopefully that will focus nicely. There we are. So you can see there's long armed feather stitch there for the honeysuckle. And then between them are big lumps of padded satin stitch. So they've got two rows, well, two layers of, of padding. And they're made, the padding is made of chain stitch. So when you do padding for satin stitch, you can do layers of satin stitch one on top of the other. Um, I don't tend to find that's firm enough for Mount Malik embroidery. You can also do um, running stitch and just go over and over with layers. And again, I don't think that builds up quick enough or is firm enough. Um, and then this way, the way you do it is to work, where are we? Here we are. Um, a, a row, well, a layer of chain stitch um, and I usually go out around the outside of the shape first and then fill in inside and then you step in half a stitch width from that and you do again on top of that and then you work your satin stitch over the top and what it does is it brings it up to be a very nice raised stitch so that's padded satin stitch then here on this I'm trying to get out of your light this leaf here we have a border around the outside of cable plait stitch. And then down the center, it's palestrina knot stitch with long arms. So you can see that the arms sit out a long way to the side. Now cable plait stitch is one of the stitches that's used in Mount Malik embroidery. It's very, very common and it's a beautiful stitch. It looks really complicated, but it's it uses a series of specific steps and once you get them into your brain and into your hand muscle memory it's quite rhythmic to work it can just take a little while to get there now you see that there's two leaves here and there's two leaves here and they're both worked in pairs and that's quite common you don't have a whole heap of different leaves worked in mountain merlot embroidery they're usually in groups so you might have a group of two leaves and those two leaves are both worked the same you might have a group of five leaves and those five leaves in that group are all worked the same so they work in groups rather than this being a different one and this being a different one and this being a different one and this being different one they worked in groups and pairs so this here is um, it's actually chain stitch but instead of worked and uh, joined onto one another they worked next to each other so I don't know if you can see that there um, each one of those stitches I'm trying to show you easily here let me get it and I'll isolate one 
might be able to see that there we are that's one chain stitch there with the little tack down stitch at the end hopefully you can see that okay and so you can see how that all builds up to form a leaf and then down the center on either side of the center vein is a row of padding and that just brings it up with a little bit of height in the middle there okay so what else have we got here um, at the ends of the honeysuckle here, the stamens, I think that's what they're called. I'm sure my sister could tell me she's the botanist. Um, they are chain stitch, but instead of the tack down stitch being at this end, it's the long bit that goes right into the center there. So there's the little chain at this end and then there's the tack down stitch. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so then if we move on to the sprig that's got the roses on it, we can see that there's one big rose there. And it's outlined in, let me just have a look, stem stitch. And then in the center is, is a whipped buttonhole wheel. So it's a buttonhole wheel, first of all, worked. And then you work whipping along the stitches. And then inside each of the petals is a running stitch filling. And it's not worked randomly. It's worked in rows, fanning out at the edges and working down towards the center and I find that makes a really simple but really attractive filling um, and we've got the rose hips or buds I don't know they're probably buds not rose hips up the end here and they are padded satin stitch again and then there is stem stitch um, for the the little feathery bits at the end I've got no idea what you would call them um, and then the stems for that are worked in coral knot stitch and it's a very well spaced coral knot stitch so there's only some knots with a bit of gap in between um what else have we got we've got the opening flower and that's worked with buttonhole stitch around the edge it's got padded satin stitch again and it's got um the little bits down the bottom here are chain stitches then we have these leaves down the bottom here of the uh, the end of the stem and they are edged in closely spaced um, French knots sorry brains not working very quickly and then down the center we have long armed feather stitch so we've got long armed feather stitch in two places here we've got it worked across the leaves to fill in there and we've also got it worked um, for the honeysuckle and you can see that they look quite different um, so there are many different ways to work your uh, long arm feather stitch and you can get very different effects with it. Now we need to talk about stems. So up here we had coral knot stitch. I think we remember that. And then at the other end of the stem we've got cable chain stitch which is quite similar to cable plait stitch. It's the same basic stitch but it's worked end on end rather than next to each other and out the sides of that so i'm trying to get it so you can see without my hands blocking the light there are it's overcast at the sides so it's just a simple stitch that comes up at the side and then goes into the cable chain and what that does is it creates little thorns out the side which is quite appropriate for a rose uh, now also here the stem that we have on the honeysuckle is very closely spaced coral knot stitch. You can see that they're very closely spaced and they almost look like um, it's a, a, a twisted cord or a rope or something. So that is the doily. I've gone through all the stitches for you. The fabric that it's worked on, this one is a poly cotton satin jean, and you can see that it's got a very smooth surface on the fabric. The, fab, uh, the, the thread that we use is a Mel Mount Melic thread. It's number three. It's about the same thickness as a full ply knitting cotton. And it's a very chunky um, thread, so you need quite a big needle. Um, and we would use a chenille 22 for most of this embroidery. For when we're doing knots, we can't use uh, bullion needles that we would normally use, which are milliner's needles, um, because the eye is too small and we can't fit the thread through. So we use a darner needle instead. 
Um, so the cotton that you use is completely matte. It has no shine at all and it should not have any shine. So people that use pearl cotton, please don't do that for your Mount Melic embroidery. And then around the edge we have the knitted fringe worked in knitting cotton. It uses four strands of thread together and that's what creates a lovely full fringe. So when you get the kit for this, it's got all the fabric in it that you need. It's got the knitting cotton, it's got the thread, the needles, it's got the pattern to trace on. Um, and I usually use a washout fabric pencil for that, um, which means that it's not gonna bleed like those awful um, washout markers do. And you'll need some knitting needles as well. Now you can't use plastic needles or bamboo needles with this because you're knitting with four strands of cotton. Cotton's got no give like wool does. So you need to have metal ones because otherwise your needles will break. Certainly do not use your beautiful tortoise shell needles or you will have them no longer. Um, so the size needles that you would use uh, are 10, 11 or 12 if we're talking imperial size or I think it's 2.753 or 3.25 if you're talking metric size. Um, so I don't know that there's very much else I can tell you about that. Um, I can put a link to the kit on my website so you can see where to find that. Um, there are a few other Mount Mellick kits as well. Um, I think, did I tell you it's got the needles in the kit as well? It does. And it's also got step-by-step -step instructions for each of the stitches. So you don't need to buy a copy of my book to go with it as well. All the instructions are in the kit. So. There we are, it's the Honeysuckle and Dog Rose Doily, or it might be Dog Rose and Honeysuckle, I can't remember which it's called. Um, and that's one of the projects that I often love to teach, um, but it's also a great standalone project for someone to make. One of the things I particularly love about Mount Mellick embroidery is all the stitches that you can use and the fun that you can have playing with them and using them in different ways. We don't have colour, so we use texture and pattern to do that instead, and we use our stitches to make that colour, uh, sorry, not the colour, the pattern and the texture. If I'm working Mount Mellick embroidery, I would put it in a hoop. Um, I wouldn't want one necessarily to take the shape like the size of the whole piece I actually prefer to use a small hoop and move it around to the areas that I'm going to be working on um, and that means that if I'm going to be moving it around I don't really want to be working my really thick stitches first so I would do the padded stitches last um, and in terms of everything else I would do it as the mood takes me so often people ask me what order would you stitch this in uh, well, if I feel like doing some feather stitch, I'll stitch the feather stitch. If I feel like doing the buttonhole stitch, then I'll stitch that. So you can see there's a lot of method in my madness. None at all. Um, I would, if, if I'm doing a stitch around the edge of a leaf, I'll probably do that first so that then I can fit in the filling inside it um, rather than if I fit the filling first and then I've got to put the embroidery around the edge. Um, if I've done the edge first, then I know whatever fits in the center is what fits in the center. So I don't run out of space. Yeah, so I just thought it'd be useful to say I definitely use a hoop and that's because we've got fairly heavyweight fabric, but we've got heavyweight stitches and we don't want it to pucker as we're stitching, particularly with all of our padded satin stitch. A hoop's going to hold it so that it feel, um, so that the stitch doesn't pull in too tight and end up puckering the fabric. So that's really important. Uh, so I hope you found that enjoyable and uh, I think that's all I've got to say today. Can't think of anything else. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.